Welcome to Airbnb Success. Today we look into Model Finds. It's all about how to become a successful horse. What is the successful horse and how to be amazing, brilliant at handling guests. And yes, we look up to you as a perfect horse and we, they will give you five star rating every single time. Okay. Let's get into it. So in Model Finds, we were looking at, into um, what is a winning horse and what type of horse are you so we can determine how to deal with guests. All right. And then the winning mentality for Airbnb horse what is like. We're also looking into uh, last-minute hosting and is it worth it or not to do last-minute hosting. Also, you will uh, provide your guests access to your house and how to be super good about this, either you be there or not. Okay. We will also um, discuss about um, how to respond with guests upon checking in and what type of uh, lock or key should you provide to them in case you're not there and actually on your holiday and then looking into how to increase the positive review so to become a successful horse we will have a very good routine that you can just do it every day in day out or pass it to your manager to your cleaner to do it as well and systemize the cleaning process so either you do it or someone else do this they have a kind of guideline to follow and we're looking at our soft check-in how to check in and check out the gas even when you're not there and they're still happy about it okay and the last one i will show you how I meet my first guest and is a real guest that I will do it live on live video when the guests arrive, how I greet them, what do I tell them and what do I provide for them in order to for them to check in happily and staying happy with no question asked during their stay. Okay, let's get into it. First one, um, you got to determine what type of horse are you in terms one or medium of top becoming a uh, winning horse. Type of horse. Okay. Understanding the kind of horse you want to be or uh, are capable of being will help to um, fill all the inquiries about finding the right type of guest for your horse type. And just as... Um, you know, to my hand of horse may feel overwhelming by overly communicated guests. And a high touch horse may unfulfilled by a self sufficient guest who prefer their privacy as well. So um by on those three main categories, um you may find a bit about yourself in more than one description. But focus on finding the one that sell most likely you and that you are most capable of being, okay? So you will need to communicate with your hostile to the potential guests. When you get the inquiries, you don't want to overpromise by putting yourself in a category that is higher charge than you are capable of, okay? So for example, you might have the moment of being a high charge horse as you experience dynamic and Guess that just work for you, but you might overall be a medium chat horse, yeah. So read the on the um. So listen to the description that I'm going to tell you. Like as a low church horse, you will have little or no um in person contact with your guests. So you either don't leave on site where the listing is or you prefer the guests who are extremely independent. Maybe your guests have their own entrance and you are renting out a finished basement or garage or you are renting your entire home while you are away on vacation. Or perhaps you work a lot and simply unable available for your guests at all. 
So the low church halls will limit their in-person interaction with the guests to meet them with the key and show them the room and the house and the space. Now, and um, the low church chap host may even leave the key in a lock box and message the guests through the Airbnb app with instruction for accessing the property. So this type of host responsibility include being responsive through Airbnb app from the point of inquiry until the guests check out. So the low church host motivation for hosting is to providing um, their income. Okay. And when they reach their financial goal, it's quite possible that they will just stop hosting. The medium type of horse um, is the type that they either on site or in the same roof as the guests, and they have the access to park of the home that um, that um, the guests access to. So. If you are this type, then you are about to interact with your guests. Um, compared to the opposite, uh, compared to the low church halls, this is pretty much impossible in this case because you can't avoid interacting with the guests at all. Okay, so um, you got to welcome your guests in person when they arrive at the property. And you got to show your guests uh, to their room and give them a tour to all of the amenity to which the guests had access while covering the how rules and answering any question they have on hand. This this call a welcome tour. Okay. Um, if you are medium touch horse, um, you will be tend to be more friendly, casual, um, start a conversation with your guests in passing when they pass by. But keep this, the boundaries because all the guests might want to avoid turning you, the horse, guest relationship towards more social and friendly one. Okay, so taking the dynamic into the friendly shift uh, territory could finish with dismissing the boundaries communicated during the house tour and the horse one. Some horse want to avoid that. Okay, so the minimum. Touch horse um, motivation for hosting it to bring in the supplemental income, and they also enjoy um, interaction um, with their guests, um, enjoy the act of hosting, enjoy meeting the new people, um, but not necessarily um, want to become friend, best friend with them. Okay, um, the high church horse um, be the type of people. That considering hosting is hosting the extra spy on Airbnb because they love hosting and want to provide exceptional experience for the guests while bringing some extra cash. And uh, if you are the high church host, then it's marvelous because guests will love you, Airbnb will love you, the whole um, sharing economy will love you, and everyone will love you. The high Church horse lives on on site and will be present when they have guests. And they like to put their own spin on going the extra mile. And maybe they offer a ride to and from the airport and prepare breakfast or other meals, or given to hanging out with guests and having in depth conversation. And they make themselves so available for the guests and don't mind giving guidance or recommendation that will not cover in the welcome. To other welcome book or in the guide book. If you are this type, then you either love people or you love being a super horse. Oh, maybe both. Um, although, do notice that a um, high touch horse could also be someone who is solely motivated by supplemental income and looking to provide a more luxury experience for the guests. They uh, tend to um, serve any extra stuff or extra communication in the listing description, headline and price, etc. Okay, um, myself, I being in in all of these categories, uh, because of the number of the place I have and manage, 
So some plies are be a loudest one, some plies are be a medium one, and some plies where um it's more central and higher price and closer to me than I be a high chat house. Not necessary. I'm living in that because I have my own place. <laughs> okay. Um. So look on in it, and you can determine which type of horse I you and what. Um. So you can fit into that criteria and support a horse around your area. But you may, you know, um, go a bit low or a bit high if you're in the medium. And if you're in the high, then you may go a bit medium or low sometime if you're actually away for your vacation, you know. But just be aware of that and um, work around it with your guests. The um, winning horse also have the winning mentality, um, which if you um, set up the cycle for feedback with your guests and actively look for the area to improve. So when you make an addition, add it to your listing. Yeah. So it shows that people that you actually um, show to people that you actively improving your space and the guests like active horse. There are no ways to tell for sure what your best combination for listing description title is. Now try out different variation as often as you can. Okay, if you are constantly tinkering, you will eventually become successful. And the experimentation is how you change your listing from fifty pound per night to ninety pound per night. Okay, so do keep that in mind. Um, last minute horse things. Is it worth it with last minute asked hosting? You ask. Um, I mean, occasionally you had to get people who want to book in the last second or late in the evening if you have an instant book, and um, if you allow guests to book for one night because most of these type of guests they only most mostly they don't say all oh, right. Mostly they want to just um, either have a night late in because the transition um to a new place or they like to they think they will be late to cut the train to go back home whereas home is far away or they just gonna have a night out and don't want to go um back too far away from that where they are okay so you got to consider how quickly you going to clean your space and so in order to um, fulfill this last minute hosting, um, I highly recommend you to clean your space after every guest leave. So you have your space available anytime if you have people book your place instantly. Okay. Um, yeah, and your space always ready for that. You got to also look at if the guest is booked at the last minute and they check in late and after the cleaning you wouldn't be able to have enough time to prepare gifts that we were talking about um, earlier. Um, so, but the thing is it's not a big deal about this um, because um, mostly they will stay for one night and anyway. And if they actually book uh, to stay over long minutes and stay for longer than two, three nights, then you can also um, give uh, give them the gift later on the second day or, you know, before they leave. Um, but all in all, last minutes, you will earn more and get more review uh, and get your spray field where this having been booked in advance before okay so if you be ready for that in any last minute things anything that need to be solved it will be easy and be done quickly with no hassle to you at all um, and whether you decide to open for last minute or not it's up to you as well if you don't want to ha want to have any hassle about this then don't need to bother but then you might have you know a whole week empty on your calendar and then it's as it's up until Wednesday someone start booking and it's been empty from Monday to Tuesday and they book last minute so it's like let's say today Wednesday and they just start booking afternoon okay so how you handle that 
that's it fine right so if they say that okay they booked the place and they want to check it in seven your place is already ready for that so just make yourself available to be there for your guests or have someone available for your guests okay so after guests book your place they will need an access on arrival day um, there's a different uh, type of, of way that you can provide access to your guests. In attempt to providing the guests access to your place, there's a many ways to do it. Um, either you you uh, personally direct um, giving guests access. Um, this is um, an advantage if you are in a block of development house where they provide 24 hours concierge but most of the time it tends to be a private house that we are having okay so um remember all hotels are uh, dependable and even three star establishments have a reliable front desk with 24 hour service and that means that new guests can walk in at any time and have someone to assist them with a check-in and it's a great feeling to know that someone will always be there at your um, service. And plus, if it's a key in this place, then guests can simply ask for a replacement with a minimal hassle. So if um, how can you provide a similar level of service without building a front desk? and um, hiring the staff like a hotel. So you either got to, if you are living in the premise yourself, living inside the place, then that is fine to 24 hours, not a big deal if the guests been locked out in the middle of the night or check in early or late. You can also accommodate it, right? What if you're not living there, okay? The best way I will show you is keyless entry. This is the newest um, way for hosts across the globe to install an electronic clocking system. And these technologies are safety options enable the guests to simply enter a numeric code or provide a fingerprint to gain access to um, the space. And the code can be changed remotely as guests cycle in and out of your place. Okay, so this option is particularly attractive to most of the hosts who are frequently on the road, go about, or not actually live in the space. And guests can check into the home without any sort of liaisons through. Although we still recommend a personal greeting whenever possible. Yeah. So let's say if you have um a cleaner who come to clean your place at a certain time and that certain time is the time when the guests are right you can also train your cleaner to check the guests in for you with a very basic detail hand over the key and then you will be the person who communicate with your guests on airbnb app okay so um back to the keyless entry um Another benefit of this remote locking system is that they can send notification to you as a host if the front door is left open or an extended period of time. Um, so depending on the brand, areas of customizable option are available regarding messaging and personalization. Um, the, finally, the electronic locks simplify the entire experience by negating the need for multiple keys. The guests don't have to worry about losing a key or locking themselves out of the apartment. Um, then for your convenience, um, there's a, a few um, electric lock products I will um, compile later on the whole list so you can take a look or uh, you can even put a lock box outside your uh, door in a hidden place where you can instruct the guests um, to uh, get access to it, to pick the key and then enter the, your space. Okay. 
So with this, um, the keyless entry, the two most popular one at the moment is Lockiton. So it's spelled L-O-C-K-I-T-R-O-N. You can check it on their website or on um, Amazon, eBay, those around them, or Quickset, which spelled K-W-I-K-S-E-T. Or just type, um, search for um, smart code dead bow lock on Google search and you will see there's several options up here for you. Um, Okay, for um, when you check the guest in to your space, is a cr crucial part of the process. Remember that because it is fairly simple and straightforward. But you must not bumble this part, okay? Because if you mishandle the check in, this will certainly lead to a negative review and a sour test in your guest mouth at the beginning of that place and if this happen doesn't matter how good the place um, they stay they already have a bad test at the beginning and anything's come after that doesn't taste good at all okay um, and if you do decide to um, retain a standard lock and key access um, to your place, then um, there's a few tips to keep your listing running smoothly, okay? Here we go. First, you got to make sure that you create several sets of keys. I'm not talking about two or three sets here, yeah? Go ahead and have five sets to make. As in the presentation, you see, that I explained clearly where are these uh, five set going to um, and that doesn't sound excessive at all because when you actually need it you will thank me later because I have tell you to do this yeah um, um, why this smartness some of you might ask okay. um, and you say the first set of case will be with you on your space manager and the cleaner at all time, all right? And that will ensure um, the fully access in case of emergency or in the event that your guest is urgently required. You don't need two set of keys for your guests, okay? In case um, it depends on your place, the place that you're staying, um, either it's one bed, flat, one bed house, or two bed. This is for one place and one guest. Um, so you need to set up key for the guest. This is not necessary that you have to hand them two set. Okay. This is for one set for the guest and then another set is prepared if they lost it, lose it. So you have another one on hand to give it to them. Okay. So if you want to provide a true hotel life service and convenience, this is the way to go. And that will allow multiple guests to have flexibility when they go to separate locations during the day and night as well. So next, you should have the four set as a backup because this needs to be stored somewhere in case you lose your key or you need to replay the key um, in the middle of your guest staying. Okay. I recommend to having a trusty uh, neighbor to keep it and so long as they are home often of course otherwise you can put the set of key in the lock box or somewhere safe inside the house but guests don't necessarily get access to okay and now we get to the key number five the backup key that should be stored somewhere by you or your managers and having the fifth key is either a height of preparedness and the absolute pinnacle of forward thinking. Now here was in the off chance that you guys happen to encounter an all and compassing party with bliss of alcohol and dance music six that call them to lose both set of keys. 
There you go. You are good to go. Either it's one or two or three o'clock in the morning. Okay. And for the starter, you can rush to the aid and provide them with key number five while retaining the key number one and key number four. And next, you can scoot your dial to, to the key stall with the key number one and have two extra copy met. So why one against holding key number one? If you have new guests arrive before the two copy are finished, you still have a set of keys to offer them while holding on to a pair of keys yourself without disturbing key number four. Okay, there you go, crisis resolved, but we will all avoid and the day is safe travel. Another quick tip is to make sure your lock works smoothly. If you have locked, it's tricky to open. Please, please, please fix it or replace it. Otherwise, it's going to ruin your reputation, <laughs> your listings. Uh, or it's going to end up as a bad review, okay? Even if it's easy for you to open, you need to be mindful of guests who are unfamiliar with whatever magic chickling or twisting or pushing that is required to get the door to open. Okay. Um... So there you go, five set of keys. So when you start listing your place, please be prepared, five sets. So you don't have to, if you have two sets now, go and cut another three. Because when you need it the most is when the keys shop unavailable or close or bank holiday. That tends to be the case, right? So do that for your own sake and prepare at the beginning. Uh, in response to your guests, um, this is important and the rate of your response is the most crucial bit. Okay? Um, you got to make think the connection between Airbnb host and the guests properly. And this isn't always an easy way, okay? The star needs to align and both parties need to be on the same page throughout from beginning to the end. You go through so much effort to create a compelling listings that people would be willing to stay in. So you need to do everything you can to create a smooth communication to lock down the details. And Airbnb like to emphasize just how important it is it to respond promptly to reservation inquiries. And sometimes the decisions are made at the drop of a hat when travelers are desperate for a place to stay. You don't want to leave them hanging, do you? So the response rate is important. And Airbnb record every time you respond. So it should be 100%. You go to when you first receive the, an inquiry from the guest, you got to reply to it and then click the approval button as well. So don't just reply and not approve or don't just approve and not reply. It doesn't matter what your guest say. Even don't don't ask anything, just approve and reply. That will be counted at 100%, right? If you cancel a guest, your rate will go down significantly. I have that happen to mine. Place and I go from a uh, super house into nothing over the night, and that uh, I haven't go back to super house now because I've been cancelled something like five guests due to several um, urgency reason. You got to send a message you get saying that you will respond later if you unable to respond there and then. Let's say if you are driving, you receive a notification from Airbnb on your phone. So just, you know, approve the request and drive a message saying, okay, I'm on the road, I get back to you um, when I uh, get home, okay? So it doesn't matter two or three hours you get home later, you still can um, reply to the question properly and they would understand um, your point of view and Airbnb will see that the response rate is going good, okay? Uh, you can write anything, anything at all that matters is respond itself. Okay. And on Airbnb, 
um, your Airbnb profile, you will see an indicator in the right column of your response rate. And it will say something like within a few hours or within a day, etc. The guests will also see this as well. Yeah. So this gives a prospective guest some insight into how attentive you are into your Airbnb inquiries and why Airbnb is 100% transparent with their search algorithm. <laughs> um, they do say that response rate plays a part in how high your listing come up in search results. So don't take any chances, please. Respond to your inquiry right away. It doesn't matter if you accept or reject them. The longer you keep people waiting, the better chance they find another place to stay. So don't keep your guests in limbo. Give them a firm yes or no as soon as you can. Unfortunately, Airbnb has made it super easy to be notified and respond to the these requests from wherever you are. And that is by using the Airbnb app with notification. Um, Airbnb has recently updated the app to include everything you need to be a successful host. So you can now accept or deny guests right from the app. And this is fantastic because if you're already out traveling somewhere yourself or know that you'll be away from your computer for for a period of time, okay? Um, we can look into um, the app later on of life, but now that it's there if you need it, okay? And don't forget that Airbnb still has notification option that you can set up. So you know as soon as the inquiry comes in, um, you can get email, text, or mobile notification on Android and on um, iOS directly from the slick new app, okay? Um, so do set that on your uh, setting uh, because if you are unable to get access to the internet there and then you still receive the text message on your phone saying, um, a guest has made inquiry or the guest have asked you a question so you can arrange accordingly to reply to their um, request okay there there really is, is no uh, excuse for leaving people hanging when they want to book your listing and Airbnb has provided all the tools for you um, to be a uh, top notch heart no matter wherever you are and it is up to you to put them into action. Yeah. I mean, after all, the first impression of a guest has of your listings isn't when they walk in, right? It's all about the first communication you have with them. So be polite, timely, and let them know that you are serious about being a good horse. A good horse. Okay. Yeah, so manage your space with your mobile app. And you can monitor your listings with your mobile app and everything on there so if you they, they, they there's a, a site that if you build people will come yeah so this calls a timeless advice because it's a applicable even to the short stay rental business and of course that is we overlook a critical piece of uh, Airbnb puzzle management but when you set everything up in your place and it's ready for the most picky and uptight guests imaginable, you need to make sure it stays that way as always. Yeah? So don't don't be skipped off down the line, okay? Your spy must be absolutely immaculate each time and every time a set of new guests check in. Because if you want those in those details in place for each visitor, you need to take the time to set up a well management machine at the beginning. And um, it is your responsibility to stay on top of your reservation, so do monitor your listing by the mobile app. If a potential guest email you, then it's on you to respond in a timely fashion and your listing ranking is actually affected by your problems as well. So you need to keep a vigilant eyes on your inbox. I recommend setting up a space filter on your email so that you can respond as quick as possible to any inquiry. Um, for the response in ads, 
in my opinion, is a key component of stellar customer service. So do your best, of course. But in my advice, it's to stretch a super level of communication smoothly from beginning to the end. Now, if you are a traveler or spend most of your time on the road and keep on top of your booking, can be a bit more challenge, right? But Airbnb has created an amazing way to monitor your listing on the go. And we've been talking about that for the last 15 minutes. So do use mobile app, okay? It doesn't matter if you're an Apple or Google, Loyalist, on Android, okay, the app come in both flavor. If it uh, anything wrong or doesn't update your app, it's just because um, sometimes Airbnb still update the service at the moment. So just reset it or um, reinstall the app and download it again. This will work properly, okay? Right, so after all the communication and get the guests in, what how you can increase the likelihood of a positive review. Uh, we already talked about um, some of the most important factor when creating a successful Airbnb listings, right? So you need a top-notch photo and a killer description. But even after you have this thing in place, how do you properly execute to be sure your Yes, has a word of wonderful time and leave a positive review. Okay, um, these are the five things that I have a uh, list out for you so that help you easily to, ma to manage and increase the chance to have positive review. Okay, first create your checklist. When you're getting ready for an Airbnb guest to arrive, you probably have a million things running through your head, yeah? So now it's the time to create a checklist in order to stay organized. Yeah. Do you have extra toilet paper? Have you vacuumed underneath the couch? And perhaps these things will be taken care of by a service um, management service online. Uh, but if you not, but if you do it yourself, then you better be on top of it because make a list of all the positive things, possible things that your guests could be concerned about and then check them off one by one. So this may take some uh, initial work up front, but when you have the comprehensive list, future guests will be a beast. Okay. And be super friendly. We discuss about how important it is to be timely with your response, but you also want to be extremely polite and courteous. This may seem obvious, but sometimes we get in the habit of shock, curl, respond, especially if we use a mobile device, right? Okay, can't imagine how um, many abbreviation words people use nowadays. Uh, especially the young people and remember when you communicate with your guests you can't really using it um, those were like you at you or uh, any abbreviation word that you just you with your family your friend okay you got to write it in a proper manner because you get guests from different level of society different place different um, mentalities so it's best to be clear and um, proper communicating okay um, yes we appreciate um, the complete sentence as well <laughs> okay so you don't need to sound like um, cloyingly sweet or artificial or flaky um, I don't mean flaky so like fake but you should act as if this person is a customer that you are going out of your way to impress, right? And the informal nature of Airbnb is one of the things that make it is so great. But remember that you are offering a service and you should keep things professional and polite as all the time. And remember to leave a little something extra 
because everyone loves surprise and presents. So your Airbnb guests is no different. Okay, they have seen the picture of your place and they know what to expect to a certain degree. An unexpected gift could make all the difference when uh, welling them on upon their entry. Yeah, and a simple bottle of why a uh, six pack of beer in the fridge is a night nice touch uh, might be a nice gift basket with fruit and cereals for the morning or uh, if your guest is a coffee fan you could set up the finest crowd for them to use when they arrive and it is doesn't have to be much but anything that goes above and beyond that they were expecting will have you get a positive review remember Okay, um, check in is an always important to strike a balance between being available for your guests and respecting their privacy. Yeah, so depending on the layout of the listing, you may or may not be there in person to help, and depending on your circumstances as well. So, why not send a friendly message to check in with them during their stays and ask if their travel went smoothly. If you know the weather is warm, why not send them a quick test recommending your favorite ice cream shop? Okay, no need to bother them or ask too many questions. And if they have issues, they will likely contact you first. Yeah, so but there is something to be said about a host who wants to make a, sure a guest trip is going as planned and wouldn't be concerned if you stay at a hotel and no one asks you how your stay was going. Okay. But this little hospitality trick will come in very handy for a horse. And personalized notes. One of the big reasons why people choose to stay in an Airbnb unit as opposed to a hotel is the personalized feeling and experience that they get from the local horse. Yeah? So you can do some easy thing to take this experience even further. Do some search on your guests before they arrive. Um, and no, 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 no stalking. <laughs> okay. Um, all of the information you search about your guests um, is just the information that will make their stays more personalized. But um, they might mention that they are coming to town to run a marathon or attending a conference. Any insight into why they're traveling or what kind of person they are can help you make their stay more unique. And handwritten no lap around the house can make them feel more at home and communicate that you invested in making their stay memorable. So I personally use an ideal hand white for words to leave personal messages from guests upon their arrival. And on top of that, you can also use a spy like this for guests to leave their opinion and message for you to see when you return. Okay, A snapping photo of this positive feedback can go a long way to gain the future guests. And that you can upload it on your um, listing photo later on. Okay. Mm. Right. And a winning house is a person know how to systemize their cleaning. And I will show you how to do that. And managing your routine as well. Okay. Um, so I have already created cheat sheet for you to manage your routine uh, from daily, weekly and monthly what you got to do every day what you want to do every week the end of the week uh, next month in order to to uh, boost your listing up and prepare for the guests uh, upon their travel or upon their request okay um so um systemize cleanings for this i also help you further by create a checklist for you yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, the Airbnb prom promotional email said that the service is affordable, easy to schedule, and can be tailored to the employer amenities such as line and service and gift baskets, right? So the cleaning service will target the session of apartments that are most crucial to a happy stay, and um, those 
area need to cover even though I have already provided you the checklist we will go through that and then you can use my checklist to um, apply it on yours or you can change the checklist um, according to your place to be more suitable but we will just go through it so you have a, um, an idea of what need to be involved and what is important and what not okay there's a, a three main area that you have to take care of first one is bathrooms uh, bedrooms and common areas so um, when you give the checklist to your cleaner or you check it yourself um, clean, cleaner we does all the reachable areas and wide open surface and countertop yeah they can wash the meal rolls and glass pictures or the vacuum mop and all the floor take out trash and recycling remember how is cleaning the, the hotel your play had to be like that um, around the tap and the mirror and the class mirror on the bathroom they have to look like um, it look like it's transparent no fingerprint no mark no residues on them yeah um, the next one is the bathroom your cleaner will have to watch and wipe down toilet and basins wash and something nice shower and sinks Wash mirror and glass pictures, vacuum and mop all the floor, and take out trash and recycling for you. Also, in the kitchen, the cleaner will have to wash the kitchen sink and dirty dishes left behind by the previous guests, and then wipe out the inside and outside the microwave every time. Mop the floor, wipe out the stove, and take out the trash and recycling. So you can um, use a checklist uh, for your cleaner or use it by yourself, but do adjust it accordingly. Okay. If you are deciding that you want to do it by yourself, um, there will be a pros and cons in it. Also, in the kitchen, the cleaner will have to wash the kitchen sink and dirty dishes left behind by the previous guests and then wipe out the inside and outside the microwave every time mop the floor wipe out the stove and take out the trash and recycling so you can um, use a checklist for your cleaner or use it by yourself but do adjust it accordingly okay if you are deciding that you want to do it by yourself, um, there will be a pros and cons. And if you outsource your check-in and cleaning, there's also pros and cons about that as well. Um, so if you do it by yourself, ideally, you should handle all the check-in. Yeah. Um, and that is the plus point because you're already leaving there. But although um, if you're on the road to the majority uh, of the year, please make sure to personally attend to your guests when you're in town. And the extra care is appreciated and it will give you an added opportunity to learn about your guests and to optimize um, their experience and if you are available during the check-in, you can show your guests around the apartment and offer tips for play to visit. This is a great way to personalize the experience and ensure a solid review. And even though this may go without saying, always show up on time. If you had told your guests that they can check in at noon, aim to arrive at your the the place no later than 11.45. Okay, we don't use plastic timing here. Okay, once your guests have had a chance to settle down, and is this will be a plus point if you can treat them for coffee at a nearby cafe, or spend half hour or so getting to know them, answering their question and asking about their plant. Um, don't and don't just do this for a good review. Okay. Be genuinely interested in your guests. 
if you are a people person like me, then I recommend adding this extra judge. It's really fun and will make your guests feeling at home as well. You just need to feel guests that when you check them in and do this to them, um, you get much, much, much better review than anything. Remember, your behavior should mirror the want and needs of each particular set of guests because if the guest is the type of person who prefer privacy and don't talk much, then do not be so excessive, okay? If you notice that you get tired or perhaps a bit shy, it might be better to simply check them in and leave them be, okay? If you decide to outsource, and unable to check the gas in your cell, you will need to find a highly responsible and personable individual to do this for you. And this is an important role, so choose your employees wisely, carefully. Okay? A good candidate should be like um, social, socially persons, always on standby in case of problem, smiling all the time, happy all the time, responsible, reliable, and punctual and in close uh, approximately to your place, under a half hour is that 15, 20 minutes even better. Our next door is superb. And the uh, um, obvious choice of a um, retiring neighbor, a nearby family member, close friend, um, paid, or you pay all the Airbnb guests to do it for you who's also in your area, okay? And while you may have friend or family member to offer to check on this role for free, I advise against it totally. As the age of all people you to say, you get what you pay for. If you want someone who is reliable, friendly, and above all else, extremely professional, you should negotiate a reasonable payment with them. Yeah, you think a uh, bad employees or friend can cost you substantially down the line. Let's say that your check-in manager forgets to show up at the apartment and is isn't reachable by phone. Oh my God, what gonna be this after it is? Within an hour or two, your guests will inevitably check into our competing hotels. And when that happens, you will definitely, always, certainly lose the total rental amount. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, okay? You guess we leave a skating review for everyone to see. And one bad review like this could sink your listing significantly. So especially if you are just starting out, please give me very, very much uh, close attention to this. The bottom line is that your check-in manager must be at the apartment on time, every time, but no show is simply unacceptable, even if it just is at the first time. Okay, you can use your car cleaner to manage uh, your check-in. I had touched on this earlier. But if you're lucky enough to locate a personalized and friendly cleaner that doesn't mind handling the check-in process, then take the advantage of this place. That's why I also recommend you to pay them higher than they would expect, okay? So, for example, I have such an agreement with, I have um, this agreement with my cleaning um, people, and those are awesome people. They're Swiss and extremely knowledge about the area. And this is an ideal setup as my cleaner always arranges the cleaning. So that my guests can completely, um, uh, so that my get the cleaning I can completely dry before my guests check in time, yeah. And on top of it, I can always count on them in case my guests encounter a problem. Um, because of my uh, cleaner uh, uh, important role and excellent service, I pay her quite well. Um, okay, um, she earns significantly more with me than she would at a normal cleaning job. And why do I do this? You can ask. And so, as I said before, you get what you pay for. And sure, she deserves the money. 
the logic behind the additional task is so that she know her work is appreciated and moreover they incentivize her to deliver awesome service time after time and then staying to work with me in the long run. Okay. I won't go into how much I pay her because it will be depend on depend on your area, um your um local or uh, the people you can find. Um you can offer them the different amount but if if you can find a person like that please offer them 10% more than the price you normally pay for other people or the normal cleaner yeah so this fee just just cover cleaning and a friendly face is ensured absolutely reliable in case of any mishaps yeah um and if you lost a key, no worries. Call your cleaner and they will be there for you. Yeah. And yes, it what if guests can't find a cool cafe or discourse, right? They can give a cleaner a buzz and they will be in the right they will point them to the right direction. Okay. So pay the more we ensure the top not service with a smile. Not bad, hey? Uh, so, in addition to managing problem or answer guest questions, your cleaner also can help you to restock supplies, set toilet paper, cleaning supplies, and maintenance the appliance and electronics. And if you are constantly on the go, this is an essential arrangement, okay? It has worked out extremely well for me. So I highly recommend it to you. Okay, um, upon guest check out, there's a three option. You either can do it yourself or, or let's uh, or, or get can do it themselves or the cleaner can do it for you. Um, with my guests, checking out is easy for them. I don't require a meetup. Instead, I simply tell them to either lock the place and leave the key in the mailbox or put it on the table, close the door behind them, and um, my cleaner will come afterward and grab, grab the keys and then um, start her cleaning. And it's simple, fast, and easy, although this way works reasonably, reasonably well for me. Um, I recommend you to do to perform the checkout if possible. Okay. Forgoing a final meetup has several disadvantages of it. Um, because first of all, you guys might forget to return the key. Oh dear, I had that happen. <laughs> that was nice. This um okay um in case the guest had to return the key by mail um. The, why I was able to get the key eventually, it took several days before um, the key arrived and I had to cut another one in the meantime. Um, this means that I had to entertain the new guests with yeah, fewer set of keys as well. Um, the second disadvantage is that you are unable to locate the damage before you get to leave. And this can make it more difficult to open a report and ask reimbursement in the event of a mishap. Yeah. So finally, you missed the opportunity to personally interact with your guests one final time. Touching with them at their leaves is a terrific time to get earnest feedback. Moreover, if there were any problem, you can tell them face to face how sorry you are that you will immediately rectify the issues and simply um, communicate that you are concerned and eager to fix the problem. You can bump up a writing and, and reveal from your guests. Uh, also, you got to let the guests know the check-in and check-out time in advance. Um, I recommend following the industry standard. Check in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and check out by lunchtime at 12 p.m. It's straightforward and predictable, right? It is, is in line with standard expectation. And in addition, the three-hour buffer provides you more than enough time to get up your place um, clean, nice, and tidy.
And in my experience, the majority of guests will ask for the early check-in and light check-out. I might be bold, but my general philosophy is to accommodate my guests. So as long as my schedule is not adversely affect. For example, if I have a new guest check in the same day a cure and a current guest want to lay check out, I should I usually cannot apply the guest. This is because my cleaning uh, lady needs a solid two hours to prepare the to prepare the place. So I cannot risk having the place look bad when my new guest arrived. Um, and when I'm unable to provide light checkout, I refer my guests to a nearby location where they can hang out and use free Wi-Fi. And I also allow a driving guest to drop off the luggage at my place by noon, even if they, the space is still need to be clean. So I give them an extra front door key, and then they can return it later. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to show you what to do when you meet your first guest. First, you got to know when they're showing up. And this is the most important thing. And do communicate with your guests. Keep on top of the time that they arrive. Okay? So you either you can be there, your cleaner be, be there, or your manager be there. If your spy isn't ready, ask if they want to just drop their bags off. And usually they do, okay. So that's it. Also, the uh, drop off slash check in time as well, okay. And the most important thing is your first guest do check your first guest in, and give them the super high quality service, okay. You can show them the entire place and talking to your guests and show them um, how to use the bathroom, the uh, kitchen, all the equipment and, sh and tell them they are your first guest so they have um, they can give you the benefit of the doubt and um, more, they will be more likely to uh, forgive any um, neglect that um, upon your communication or you check in um, because you can say to them, oh, you're actually my first guest, so if anything that I forgot to tell you, um, please just remind me and I will do my best to uh, make you stay as comfortable as possible. Okay. Um, you can also go um, an extra mile or give them your um, cell phone number and check in with them. The next day, um, make sure that you enjoy the interaction, of course, don't make it feel like the guest is a burden for you and you actually have to check them off of what important you were doing for them. That's, that's not nice at all, okay? I have an, a video to walk you through um, your first guest. But most importantly, don't worry about it. It's much more natural than you think, okay? Um, because if your spy isn't ready, ask if they want to just drop the bag and use me to do it as And So look into that so you can see um, how do I check my guests in. And you can either um, copy it or make up something that much better for yourself, okay? And I'll see you in the next session. All right. Thank you and bye-bye.